Hello friends, this video on friction part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, we will now look at some of the questions just to make sure that whatever we I have explained is clear to you. So let us look at question number one. Fill in the blanks. Friction opposes the dash between the surfaces in contact with each other. Friction is something which op always opposes motion or movement. Friction depends on the dash of surfaces. So it depends on how rough or how smooth the surfaces are. And roughness and smoothness depends on the irregularities on the surfaces. Because even smooth surfaces have irregularities, but they have lesser irregularities when compared to a rough surface. Sliding friction is dash than static friction. Sliding friction is when the body is moving so that time it doesn't get enough time for proper interlocking so the interlocking is less therefore friction will also be less whereas in static friction there is more interlocking therefore more friction friction produces dash friction produces heat and that is why it leads to lot of energy loss Sprinkling of powder on the carom board dash friction. So when you sprinkle powder on the carom board, what happens? The surface becomes slippery because the friction is reduced. So this reduces friction. Now another small thing which I would like to mention here. Now as I told you that friction happens due to irregularities of surfaces. So this is suppose this is one surface, this is another surface. Now what happens when you apply something to reduce friction? For example, in this case I said that if you apply powder on the carom board, it will reduce friction. Now what happens is when you apply powder, you are basically applying it somewhere here in between the two surfaces. So when you try to apply something here in between the two surfaces, the interlocking effect reduces. Like in earlier, the two surfaces were directly in contact with each other. So they were getting well interlocked. So friction was high. Now in between them, you are applying something else like powder or oil or grease. So because of that, the interlocking is getting reduced. And when your interlocking reduces, the friction also reduces. Question number two. Four children were asked to arrange forces due to rolling, static and sliding frictions in a decreasing order. Their arrangements are given below. Choose the correct arrangement. So, okay. So, you have four options and you have to select one of them. And we have to arrange it in decreasing order. Decreasing means from high to low. From high to low. To low that is decreasing order so which of these friction rolling static or sliding has a greater value which friction is more so static friction is maximum so static friction will be maximum then comes sliding friction and then at last is rolling friction because rolling reduces friction so which is the right option it is static sliding and then rolling question number three Question number three. Alida runs a toy car on dry marble floor, wet marble floor, newspaper and towel spread on the floor. The force of friction acting on the car on different surfaces in increasing order will be. So these are the four options that are given to you. So what do you think? In which case friction will be more? So friction will be more if the surface is more rough. So in this case where the surface will be maximum rough, so the surface will be most rough in case of a towel spread. So if you see here, here the surface will be maximum rough. Therefore friction will be maximum. Lesser than this would be a newspaper. So when you place a newspaper, so obviously it will become difficult for the toy to move over it. Then would be the dry marble floor and finally the wet marble floor because in wet marble floor it's, it's water over there so it is slippery right. Now we have to arrange it in increasing order that means from smaller to higher that means from smaller values of friction to higher values. So first would be wet marble floor then dry marble floor then newspaper and then towel spread. Question number four. 
Suppose your writing desk is tilted a little. So this is your writing desk and it is slightly tilted. Now as soon as it gets tilted, what will happen? A book which was kept on it, it will start sliding down. So what would be the direction of frictional force? Now I have told you two things about frictional force. That the frictional force always acts in a direction opposite to the direction of motion. Now when the book is sliding down, it is moving in this direction. So the force of friction will move in an opposite direction. So that is one thing. So first thing is frictional force will oppose motion. So it will be in a direction opposite to that of motion. The second thing is the force of friction will always be parallel to the frictional force will act in a direction parallel to the surfaces in contact. So where do you have the surfaces in contact here? So the book is in contact with the surface here. So this is the surface in contact. So parallel to this, that means in this direction and opposite to motion. So this would be the direction of the frictional force. So this is the direction of frictional force. Question number five. You spill a bucket of soapy water on a marble floor accidentally by chance. You just spill it off. Would it make it easier or more difficult for you to walk on the floor? Now what happens when the soapy water falls on the surface? Now here also the same thing happens. The friction reduces and when the friction reduces, what happens? Your chances to slip increases and therefore it becomes more difficult for you to walk. Now the question is how the friction gets reduced. So we will try to understand it. Normally when the uh, soapy water was not spilled in that case, so there was good enough interlocking between the two surfaces that is your foot and the ground. Now when the soapy water is spilled, so the soapy water comes somewhere in between here. So therefore the interlocking is spoiled. So the soapy water comes in between the two layers and due to the presence of the soapy layer the interlocking is spoiled. So interlocking reduces therefore friction reduces. Question number six. Explain why sportsmen use shoes with spikes. Because spikes make the surface of the shoes rough and when the shoes become rough the friction increases. If friction increases, they, it, it becomes easier for them to walk or run because their grip on the ground increases. So it is easier for them. Question number seven. Iqbal has to push a lighter box and Seema has to push a similar heavier box on the same floor. So let us suppose this is Iqbal and this is Seema. Who will have to apply a larger force and why? Now when she has to move a heavier box, so logically also obviously she has to apply a larger force. But why? How do we explain that in terms of whatever we have learned about friction? Now when the box is small, the weight of the box is also small. Here the weight of the box is huge. Now when the weight of the box is huge, the box is pressed harder to the surface. Now when the two surfaces are pressed harder, what happens? friction increases. So here in this case weight of the box is more. So this is pressed harder. So pressed harder to the surface. Therefore friction is also more. Now if friction is more you have to apply more force to overcome friction. So therefore Seema has to apply a larger force. So friction is more for the heavier box therefore larger force needed to be applied to make it move. Question number eight. Explain why sliding friction is less than static friction. Now as I had explained before also, now when an object is at rest, then there is sufficient interlocking between the two surfaces. So they are well interlocked. Since interlocking is more, therefore friction is more. So that is the scenario for static friction. But as soon as the object starts moving, then the two surfaces do not get enough time for proper interlocking. So as you see here, it starts moving, it keeps changing its position. So therefore not enough time for proper interlocking, less interlocking, therefore less friction. So therefore sliding friction is lesser than static friction. Question number nine. Give examples to show that friction is both a friend and a foe. 
Friend is of course a friend where we will tell only about the advantages of friction. Like it helps us to walk, it helps us to hold things, it stop a moving object, start or stop a vehicle, helps in grinding, construction purposes, helps us to write. So couple of things friction helps us to do. So friction is necessary for all these stuffs. There would have been no construction, there would have been no machineries without friction. So of course it is our friend. On the other hand, it also harms us in a number of ways, mostly by wasting energy. It releases heat, it opposes motion and this heat is nothing but a form of energy. So a lot of energy gets wasted due to friction. One is because heat is produced unnecessarily. Second is because whenever there is a friction involved, more amount of force is need, need, needed to be applied to overcome friction. So that is also we waste a lot of energy. Machinery parts wear and tear becomes more frequent due to friction. They end up getting damaged. More power required as I said. So looking at both the advantages and disadvantages, it was called as a necessary evil. Question number 10. Explain why objects moving in fluids must have special shapes. So here com comes the concept of streamlining. Now special shapes experiences less fluid friction because if the fluid friction, if an object is moving through fluid, so fluid will exert some friction, right? Like this aeroplane is moving through air. So air will exert some friction. So air will apply or it will ex exert frictional force in this direction which will oppose the motion of the aeroplane but the aeroplane wants to move so in order to overcome this friction the aeroplane will have to apply a lot of force to overcome it so that would just unnecessarily waste energy of the aeroplane so it is better to shape it in such a way that it experiences lesser fluid friction so for that purpose special shapes are given to objects which move through fluids so that they can experience lesser fluid friction so best examples to understand would be aeroplanes and boats you can compare these with naturally existing organisms which move through fluids for example fishes in water birds in the air so they also have specific shapes which help them to traverse through fluids and considering their shapes only the objects which move in those kind of fluids they have also been shaped so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and i hope that this lesson on friction would have helped you now there is a lot more to friction so this is just the beginning so we have just i have just tried to introduce you to friction so that now if your base is clear it will become easier for you when you learn about friction in your higher class especially in your 11th you will learn in much more detail much you will be able to solve much more complex problems related to friction so please focus on your concept and i hope that this lesson would have helped you so see you all in the next lesson thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.